Good evening. Thanks for joining us. And you're watching the evening edition of News on 2 with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Our first story. Now, the long-awaited trial of former Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Chin Razak officially starts today. And High Court Judge Mohamed Nazlan Mohamed Ghazali ordered the trial to begin immediately, even as Dr. Sri Najib's 10-man defense team, led by Tansri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, flashed a last-ditch attempt to delay its start by filing an application to challenge the charges only this morning. In a firm voice, the judge said, the trial commences now, ending widespread speculation that it may be postponed at the very last minute. As proceedings began this afternoon, Attorney General Tommy Thomas in his opening speech said Dato Sri Najib is accused of offences committed during his time in office when he also held the position of Finance Minister. These offences were committed during his time in both positions simultaneously combining maximum political power. He added the burden is now on the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the accused is guilty of the criminal charges preferred against him at this trial. Dr. Sri Najib, 66, faces three counts of criminal breach of trust, one charge of abusing his position, and three counts of money laundering over SRC International Sundry Ranbirhad funds, amounting to 42 million ringgit. Well, multi-billion dollar 1MDB scandal linked luxury yacht equanimity has been sold to casino operator Gunting Malaysia Berhad at the price of 126 million US dollars or 504.1 million ringgit. Now the announcement was made by Attorney General Tommy Thomas in a statement released today. Tommy said the price will be paid by Genting and it will be received by the Kuala Lumpur Admiralty Court at the end of this month. This will be the highest sum of money the government has recovered from the infamous 1MDB scandal within a mere eight months since the commencement of this action. According to Tommy, the 126 million US dollars was the best offer received in the five months since the super yacht was announced for sale in October 2018. Given that the Genting offer was negotiated directly with the Malaysian government, no agency commission was payable, thus resulting in savings of about 4.4 million US dollars or almost 18 million ringgit. Moreover, Tommy said for purpose of transparency, a further statement will be issued as soon as the sale has been received and details of the expenditure incurred as well as the net amount has been credited into the newly opened 1MDB assets recovery account. The equanimity was once owned by fugitive businessman Lo Teg Jo, better known as Jo Lo. The equanimity was seized off the coast of Bali by Indonesia in February last year, who then handed the vessel to Malaysian authorities in August last year. Well, Bukit Aman police will discuss with the relevant authorities if there is a need to blacklist and prevent foreign motorists with outstanding traffic summonses from entering the country. Now, Inspector General of Police Tantri Mohamed Fuzi Harun said as things stood now, there were no instructions from the government to the authorities, including the police, to implement such a course of action. Masalah-masalah traffic yang apa ni, melakukan kesalahan traffic di negara kita, kita akan ambil tindakan berterusan lah, macam blacklist, uh, menyekat dan uh, mahu pihak mereka menjelaskan lah apa ni sama-sama trafik yang tertunggak yang begitu besar jumlahnya. Jadi usaha berterusan sedang dibuat termasuk mengesan kendaraan-kendaraan yang masuk ini. He said this at the launch of the Southern Region Police Band at Johor Police Contingent Headquarters in Johor Bahru. Tantri Mohamed Fuzi was asked to comment on the latest ruling by Singapore on 1st April, which barred and turned back foreign motorists with outstanding traffic offences from entering the Republic. Separately, Tantri Mohamed Fuzi defended the actions of a motorcycle patrol unit URB policeman who discharged his firearm at a man who tried to attack his colleague with a weapon believed to be a pen knife in Klang yesterday. URB yang yang nak diserang itu uh, agak sukar untuk beliau mengelakkan uh, dari pengambil tindakan self defense ini tadi pasal uh, beliau nak ditikam oleh apa ni uh, suspek berkaitan. Jadi untuk kita mendapatkan taser gun ataupun elektrik gun ada baru ni ada ada 2 3 jenis teknologi 
In the 2 p.m. incident, a URB team received a call saying that a man was in a fit of rage and holding a knife in front of a bank in Bukitinki Klang after reportedly failing to withdraw money from the ATM. The man who sustained two gunshot wounds in his abdomen was rushed to the Tunku Ampuan Rahima Hospital for treatment while the two policemen were unhurt. Well, a 54-year-old fake gun maker was among 10 people arrested by police during 10 raids conducted in Bentong, Bara, and Tamarlo, Pahang. It was believed that the man had been selling the fake guns, which really looked like the real ones, for between two to 3,000 ringgit. Speaking to the media in Bentong, Pahang, CID Chief Dato Othman Nanyan said, Preliminary investigations revealed that the man had started making and selling the fake guns since 2014 using metal and iron scraps. <laughs> Daripada sepuluh keseluruhan daripada kes-kes ini, pihak kita telah membuat rampasan sejumlah sepuluh laras senjata api buatan sendiri. Sebagaimana yang tuan-tuan tengok di depan ini. Dan satu laras senapang patah. The 10 suspects, aged between 30 to 60 years old, are being remanded under Section 7 and Section 8 of the Arms Act in 1960 for increased penalties. Well, 10 illegal immigrants were detained at several business premises, including a morning market in an operation by the Kedah Immigration Department in Alustar, Kedah, yesterday. Now, in a statement released today, Kedah Immigration Director Zohair Jamaludi said they were among 27 foreigners who were rounded up for inspection during the four-hour operation, which ended at 2.30 p.m. According to Zuhair, those arrested comprised five Myanmar men, three Bangladeshi men, a Nepalese man, and an Indonesian woman aged between 13 and 38. He said they were detained for not having valid travel documents and abusing their social visit pass. They are being detained at the immigration lockup at the Home Ministry building for investigations and would then be sent to the Balantic Immigration Detention Depot in Sikh. Well, search and rescue have found the second and final victim reportedly missing on Monday after their fiber boat capsized in Sungai Pahang near Pulau Awang Mandor. Ng Bun Hung, 33, was found drowned today by Pahang Fire and Rescue about four kilometers from where the boat capsized. District Police Chief Superintendent Amran Sidek said Bon Hung from Kapong, Kuala Lumpur was found drifting near the riverbanks of Kampung Pasir Panjang at 9.20 a.m. The remains were later taken to Pekan Hospital for post-mortem. Yesterday, Chan Ho Kei, 49, also from Kapong, Kuala Lumpur, was found entangled in fishing net some 60 meters from the spot he was reported missing at 12.25 p.m. The victim, clad in dark t-shirt, was identified by his wife at the jetty before the body was sent to Pekan Hospital for post-mortem. In the 4.45 p.m. incident, Chan Along with Ng and three others, including the boat's Indonesian skipper, were in the middle of the river to take pictures of sand mining activities along the river when their 13-feet boat capsized. All five men fell into the water, but Sao Ki Chiong, 44, Fan Ka Kiong, 41, and the boat's skipper, identified as Suprianto, 24, were pulled out by villagers who were fishing nearby. It is learned that the boat was unstable and two of the men were standing and trying to balance themselves as they took pictures before the boat capsized. Well, eight squatter homes were destroyed in a fire at Kampong Usaha Jaya, Johor Bahru, in the wee hours of today, leaving 16 dwellers with only clothes on their back. And during the 2.08 a.m. incident, however, no lives were reportedly lost and all 16 dwellers were safe. 
As a result of the fire, four homes were completely razed while the flames only affected the kitchen area of the four other houses. Johor Fire and Rescue Department said the eight fire engines and two emergency medical retrieval services, EMRS vehicles, along with 41 members and officers, were rushed to the location to put out the flames. The firefighting operation fully concluded at about 4.47 a.m. All victims involved were later placed at the Usaha Jaya Community Hall in Skudai, Kiri. The cause of the fire and total damages are still being investigated. The Communications and Multimedia Ministry welcomes any suggestions or proposals that would improve the content of Radio Television Malaysia, that's RTM. Now, which Deputy Minister Edin Chasli Shith well, says at the moment increasing RTM's digital content was the main focus and many changes have been implemented in line with the focus. Uh, kita lihat uh, sama ada saluran berita dan saluran hiburan uh, dalam tempoh 9 bulan ini banyak perkara-perkara penambahbaikan yang telah dibuat dan kita juga mengalu-alukan sekiranya ada bentuk cadangan dan pandangan yang boleh menyumbang ke arah penambahbaikan ini uh, saya uh, dan juga pihak kementerian sangat terbuka kepada pandangan-pandangan uh, yang positif supaya kita sama-sama dapat uh, mempertingkatkan dan uh, menghasilkan mutu dan kualiti uh, penyiaran RTM ini. RTM is currently in the process of going full HD from analog broadcasts and they are also implementing its transformation plan to strengthen their working culture in line with the Industrial Revolution 4.0 known as IR 4.0 which focuses on digitalization. Well, the differences in opinions between two cabinet ministers regarding the Linus issue well, should be seen as a healthy debate in an effort to find what is best for the country. And Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail says both ministers have the right to voice out on the Linus issue. Ada dua cara melihat hanya uh, satunya pada segi ekonomi. Menteri ekonomi dia naklah uh, bukan ekonomi entrepreneurship kan. Naklah keusahaan itu ditingkatkan. Dan uh, pada segi uh, apa ni uh, menteri alam sekitar dia baru saja sudah pada pencemaran Kim Kim itu memang mengambil kira itu. The deputy premier nonetheless said the government must look at the liners issue particularly on its radioactive waste management. She said this to reporters when met at the parliament lobby in Kuala Lumpur today. Well, the Works Ministry will submit all toll-related proposals, including issues related to the elimination of toll collection to the Cabinet in June. Now, Deputy Works Minister Mohamed Anwar Mohamed Tahir said the Ministry has appointed an independent audit consultant to help analyze the data and the proposals. Dua toll yang Webby sebutkan itu, Memang dalam perhatian tetapi kita tak boleh nak buat uh, pengumuman sekarang. Semuanya bergantung kepada keputusan akhir yang akan dicadangkan pada bulan Jun nanti. In a related development, Mohamed Anwar said the ministry will consider giving an injection of funds to Plus Malaysia Berhad to reduce its financial debt. The decision, however, depends on the report that will be presented later. Plus had to issue Sukuk bonds totaling 30.6 billion ringgit to buy back all public shares after being delisted from Bursa Malaysia. A vast majority of the toll collection are channeled to repay bonds, cover the costs of operation and to maintain highways. Although liabilities continue to increase, Plus has never failed to repay the loan specified. They have achieved this through good cost management and prudent spending without compromising the safety and quality of their services. Well, exports of frozen whole fruit durians to China will only be implemented once inspection and quarantine follow the set of protocol and approved by China's General Administration of Customs. Now, Agriculture and Agro-Based Industry Deputy Minister Sim Zizin said through the latest discussions last February, China's Customs Department had agreed to start inspecting local durian farms and processing facilities. Antara syarat-syarat yang telah dinyatakan dalam protokol pengeksportan durian tersebut yang perlu dipetah, dipatuhi adalah seperti berikut. Nombor satu, pengusaha fasilitis dan ladang hendaklah berdaftar dengan Jabatan Pertanian Malaysia selaku competent authority. Kedua, 
pengusaha fasiliti perlulah mengamalkan Good Manufacturing Practices (GMP) dan mempunyai sijil GMP yang dikeluarkan oleh Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia. Ketiga, pengusaha ladang durian hendaklah mengamalkan amalan pertanian baik (Good Agricultural Practices) dan pengurusan perosak bersepadu (Integrated Pest Management) di ladang mereka. In his reply to a question from Kapong MP Lim Lip Eng, Sim also told the Dewan Rakyat that exports of durian to China had recorded an increase of 244.5% in 2018 compared to 2017, a jump from 3.9 million ringgit to 9.44 million ringgit. The Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agents, MATA, has set a target of 35 million ringgit sales for its upcoming travel fair in Pulau Pinang. Its Secretary General, Nigel Wong, said about 35,000 visitors were expected to flock to the three-day fair, which begins this Friday at Setia Spice Arena. Wong said the Mata Fair Penang in September recorded a sales turnover of 31.6 million ringgit with 186 boots involved. This year, the number of exhibition boots has risen to 264. Our expected numbers for April uh, will be about 35,000 visitors and about 35 million or so in sales. Among the highlights of this year's fair would be a visitor daily lucky draw prizes to be won that included air tickets and hotel accommodation. In conjunction with the three-day Mata Fair Penang, Malaysia Airlines and sister company Firefly Airlines are offering discounts of up to 52% on airfares to a host of destinations. Admission to the fair, which opens from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., is free. Well, it would seem that all it took was a new haircut to get back the winning feeling. Now, National Mixed Doubles Shuttler Tan Kian Ming was spotted with a near ball haircut as he and his partner Lai Peng Jing powered into the second round by choking a big upset in the Malaysia Open at Bukit Jalil yesterday. The duo played some of the best badminton of their career to take down world number three in all England finalists, Yuta Watanabe, Arisa Higashino of Japan, 21-16, 21-15 in 37 minutes. After dominating the first game, Kianming Pei Jing were on fire to gain a 12-3 lead in the second. The Japanese pair would cut that down to 18-15, but the Malaysians kept a cool head to win the next three points and the match. It was the pair's first win of the year after first round exits in the Malaysian and Indonesian Masters, as well as the German and All England Opens earlier this year. Kianming Pei Jing's next challenge will be against India's C. Pranav Jerry and R. N. Siki, as as they fight for a place in the quarterfinals on Thursday. Well, Kelantan lost 3-0 to Selangor in their own backyard in the second round of the 2019 FA Cup at the Sultan Muhammad IV Stadium in Kotobaru yesterday. Now, Selangor, which was still fresh with its second Super League win this season, beating Trungano FC last Friday and eventually overcame a stubborn Kelantan side after a difficult opening first half. Solano almost went ahead in the 18th minute, but the powerful drive by skipper Mohamed Amri Yahya in the penalty box was off target. The Red Giant squad continued to press the Kelantan defence, which saw the host goalkeeper Lim Chien Kai being forced to work hard to thwart several dangerous attempts, including an attempt by Sandro da Silva in the 28th minute. Slango eventually found their breakthrough when Shazwan Zainon struck in the 62nd minute before the man of the moment, Faiz Nasir, continued with his rich vein of form with a welcome brace in the 65th and 87th minute to help the Red Giants march into the next round. Trangano, meanwhile, signaled their strong intent to lay their hands on the FA Cup trophy this season after they demolished Ultimate FC 5-0 yesterday to lead four other teams into the third round. The Turtles played without their star striker, Deceche Kipre, but this proved to be of no hindrance to Irfan Bakhti's side quest for goals. It took the home fans less than 90 seconds to celebrate as they cheered Ashari Samsudin's opening goal. 
The floodgates opened after Igor Zonjic's goal in the 74th minute. Sanjar, Shachmirov, Nazrullah Hanif Johan and Karol Izwan Rosli's goals in the 76, 86 and 90th minute added further gloss to the result as their opposition defense was torn to shreds. With that, we conclude this evening's News on 2. In our top story, long lists of charges against Dato Sri Najib as one MDB trial kicked off today. Well, join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates and news stories. I'm Muhammad Amin Carlos. Stay tuned to TV2 and have a pleasant evening.